Welcome back to Saturday Morning Magic. I've had a request from my mother to talk about multicolored magic decks. Now, take this with a grain of salt because I am still getting my bearings, um, but I'm a quick learner and I've been obsessed with magic for uh, the last few months, so I'm learning as fast as I can. So the question was, why do some people have different color cards in their deck? Color cards that aren't the same color. So instead of having a mono color deck, you have multicolored decks. So in the mid 2000s, Wizards of the Coast created um, the plane of Ravnica. Now, planes in Magic the Gathering lore, story, are different universes that are all connected by um, tangible threads. Every plane is distinguishable from the other, and that's why the most powerful creatures in Magic the Gathering are called planeswalkers. They're the only creatures that have the ability to travel from one plane to another plane. <clears throat> These planes all have um, very particular types of characters there very particular types of magic there very particular types of architecture or color palettes um synergies with one another as far as cards go and so i wanted to do a quick rundown of color combinations in magic for dummies um i will quickly start by saying that i am a big fan of simic which is blue and green uh, Demir, which is blue and black, and Golgari, which is black and green. These are my favorite because Simic is all about playing creatures. Um, actually, you know what? Let me back up one step. The reason why these color combinations were invented is because on the back of a magic card, um, you've got five symbols, five colors. Um, everything in magic is one of those five or colorless. Um, and so for a decade, when Magic first came out, they had to design and create new things within these five colors. Um, colors are opposite of one another. Colors um, are good against some and bad against others. For the longest time, their design team was stuck in a box with five colors. And in the middle of the 2000s, when they invented Ravnica, which is a plane that exists that has a bunch of clans in it that are two colors. They all of a sudden went from designing the game from a five color standpoint to designing the game from a 10 color standpoint because every pairing was new possibilities. And what they did was they uh, created a backstory, created characters, created um, guilds, they're called, um, in the plane of Ravnica. And these guilds have very particular play styles, very particular goals, and very particular paths to winning the game. Um, my Simic deck here, my Demir deck here, and my Golgari deck here are all very much within the realm of those guilds, and they do the very specific things that those guilds are meant to do. The synergy between blue and green is very different than the synergy between blue and black. And much like uh, that difference, the synergy between black and green is very different. So I'm going to uh, minimize this and bring up my browser again. And I found this nice little rundown on draftsim.com uh, of all the color combinations in Magic. The guilds, the clans, all the wedges, and everything in between. So we're going to run it, run down it pretty quickly. Um, and this article, I think, is going to do us a lot of favors. Um, so in the Plains of Ravnica are all the two color combinations. And the two colors are Azorius, which is white blue. Um, their primary mechanics are flying and detainment. So there's things like pacifism and arrest, um, things that keep creatures from doing the things that they're supposed to be doing. Um, they have a lot of main races like birds, griffins, sphinx, spirits, uh, humans, knights, soldiers, advisors, wizards, 
Um, there's a lot of life gain to, to be had in Azorius. There's lots of control to be had in Azorius because you're mixing white with blue. Blue is primary, primarily control and white is primarily armies and health. So mixing those two, you've got a whole different play, play style. The next guild is Demir, which is blue black. And blue black is generally a rogues deck. So the primary mechanics are death touch, mill, mimicry, and surveillance. Um, death touch means that any damage is lethal damage. Milling means that your opponents are taking cards from their library and putting them in their graveyard. So there's a lot of Demir rogues decks, which are focused primarily on milling. But one of the win states of the game is to take your opponent down to zero cards in their library and you win. The next pairing is Rakdos, which is black red. And black red is a little pretty scary. There's lots of death touch. There's lots of powerful creatures. There's lots of reanimation. Um, red is primarily an aggro deck, whereas black is primarily a life loss color and a graveyard synergy color so mixing aggro and graveyard synergy you've got some pretty unique combinations you can have there the next combination is gruel which is red green so you've got aggro and creatures those are your main focuses you've got stuff like goblins ogres hydras cyclopses this is the type of deck you want to play if you like mystical fantastical creatures do red green um, the next one is Selesnia, which is green-white. So you've got a lot of protection. You've got a lot of um, health gain. You've got a lot of health gain, actually. Green-white are pretty much all the health, health gain in the entire um, history of magic is either green or white. Um, you've got lots of cool forest creatures. You've got lots of humans and, and protectors. You've got lots of druids and shamans and clerics, that kind of thing. Uh, it's very fun. The next one is Orzov, which is white-black, which you would think don't normally go together because black is life loss, dead creatures, white is life gain, uh, angelic creatures. Um, but there's some taxing, there's some lifelink, there's afterlife. Um, angels and vampires astoundingly work very well together if you've got the right cards. Um, and so that is Orzov, a white-black the next one is Is It, which is blue red, and they have kind of like a steampunky electrical vibe to them. Um, they do a lot of damage. They have a lot of dragons. Is It Dragons is one of the more powerful and um, popular decks in competitive magic. So you've got a lot of one shot damage. You've got a lot of dragons. You've got a lot of goblins, um, some elementals, and there's lots of wizardry happening, which is really cool. Golgari, which is another one of my favorites, is black green, and it has a lot to do with uh, undergrowth and death touch. So um, you've got creatures that are dying, low level creatures with death touch. So you're making your opponent accountable. You've got a lot of creatures dying and going to your graveyard, and then you're using some of those black cards to bring creatures from your graveyard back into play. Um, You've got a lot of elves and druids and shamans, and it's all kind of about the underground kind of natural poisony fungi uh, vibes to it. Uh, the next one is Boros, which is red white. So you've got aggro um, and you've got health gain and protection. And so Boros is really interesting because there's a lot of, um, not a lot of magic but there's a lot of gear. So you got a lot of things like um, Boros. Boros gear decks have a lot of equipment that you can attach to creatures, uh, humans, knights, warriors, um, barbarians, what, what have you. So you're getting a bunch of guys onto the battlefield. You're beefing them up. Um, it's basically the one deck where you're making the biggest, strongest, beefiest dudes. Your battlefield should be big and strong uh, the next up is Simic which is uh, my other favorite that I pointed out in arena there and Simic is green blue 
and the whole point of Simic is card draw, mana ramp, and growing your creatures. So mana ramp is when you have more mana than you should normally were you playing a single mana per turn. Um, there's lots of cards that give you extra mana. There's lots of cards to tap to add mana. There's lots of cards that enchant for extra mana. And then you use that extra mana to give your creatures, your your um, mammoths, your dinosaurs, your what have you, you give them buffs. So Simic is all about growing. So you combine the powers of blue and green to grow creatures to abnormal sizes and destroy your enemy. It's really good if you like to play um, a little bit of control. You like green creatures, so like forest creatures what have you um but you also want to be really aggro because sometimes you can get these simic decks to kind of articulate into crazy end game scenarios where you've got five 20 20 creatures on the board and there's just no there's no beating it um and so that's all for the two color combinations and then we go into standard three color combinations so the more colors you add to your deck, the more difficult it is to ensure that you have the right colors to cast the cards in your hand. Because you generally have 20 mana in a 60 card deck, and it, the more times you have to split that 20 mana into different colors, the less likely you are to pull the color that you need off the top of your deck. So it complicates some things. But the synergies that you can get out of three color decks are sometimes worthwhile. I've been watching the Challenger Gauntlet uh, online this weekend, and the majority of these pro players are playing three color decks. So the first three color combination is Bant, which is white, green, blue. So you've got a lot of uh, protection, you've got a lot of creatures, you've got a lot of creature growth, you've got a lot of life gain, you've got a lot of control. It's very much all of the positive aspects you're trying to outplay or outbuild your opponent you're not trying to affect them too much you're not trying to control the board too much you're just trying to grow 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 the next combination is esper which is blue white black which has a little bit more control and then a lot of life gain life steal with your white black combinations the next is grixis which is black red blue and that is really interesting because you've got a lot of sorceries, a lot of aggro with the blue or with the red black combinations. And then you've got the blue control. Sometimes uh, Grixis decks can lean a little bit towards blue creatures, black zombies kind of thing. Um, it's just, if you want to go full aggro, there's a lot of good aggro cards in all three of those colors. The next one is Jund, which is red, black, green. And Jund is really interesting because you've got a lot of food decks, you've got a lot of growth and aggro decks, you've got a lot of regeneration with your black spells. Um, it's a very interesting co three color combination. The next one is Naya, which is green, red, white. And Naya is really great at making a great army, buffing that army, and then gaining health or healing and protecting that army. So again, kind of like the um, the Grixis, or actually the Esper decks, the Naya decks are a lot of focusing on your side of the table and not a lot of effect or um, punishment for the other side of the table. The next three color combination is Abzan, which is white, blue, green, black, green, and um, there's a lot of permanence you want for Abzan. You want to have a lot of enchantments. You want to have a lot of artifacts and you use those artifacts to control your green creatures, your black regeneration, your lifesteal. And you protect everything with your white cards. You regenerate everything with your black cards and you attack with everything. Uh, you attack with your green cards and you use those artifacts and enchantments to buff up uh, those creature cards that you have in play. Uh, the next three color combination is Jexai, which is blue, red, white. 
And Jexai has a lot of control. A little bit of aggro, but a lot of control. Um, this is a situation where you're using certain Jexai cards in combination to get infinite turns, or you generate infinite mana, or you make sure that the other player can't play anything on the battlefield. That's the kind of control deck that Jexai is. It's very overpowering, but you need to have three or four steady cards that you get in rotation. And if you don't get those, there's not a lot of wiggle room outside of that to win a game or control a game. Uh, the next combination is Sultai, which is black, green, blue. So kind of like the black, blue decks um, of the Demir, the Sultai decks are more about control, more about um, poisons and creature growth and, and that kind of thing. It's It's got a little bit of a chance to get out of hand, but most Sultai decks are geared towards control um, where you're denying the other player, you're buffing your guys, it's you're controlling the battlefield more than overpowering other people. Uh, the next one is Mardu, which is red, white, black. It's not a super popular tricolor combination, um, but you've got a lot of aggro and regeneration with the black-red combinations, and then you've got a lot of protection and life gain with the white. Um, there's a lot of dragons in Mardu decks. There's a lot of um, speed. There's a lot of quick hitting. Mardu decks are, are very aggro in general. Um, but again, not super popular in current meta. The next one is Tamir, which is green, red, blue. Um, and Tamir is the one tricolor that above all else is about putting large creatures onto your battlefield and then making those large creatures even larger. It is super overwhelming for your opponent. It can pop off like crazy. Tamir is an insane creature deck. It's it's double what Naya is, and it can get out of hand real quick. And then, so there's some there's some things that you can do with five color decks, which is called Wooberg. Um, anytime any of the five main mana colors are talked about in Magic: The Gathering, it's either white, U, B. R, white U, W, U, B, R, or G. So that stands for white, blue, black, red, and green. And the reason why blue is the letter U is because B was already black and L is already land. So they went to the third letter, which is U. So if you ever see Wooberg out on online or in chat or in anything, um, what they're referring to is the five color wheel of Magic the Gathering. And then there's no color. So you can play, um, if you're playing commander, you have a colorless commander. If you're playing standard, you focus on cards that are colorless. And then it doesn't matter what mana you have. You can put 20 random mana if you want. Or 20 of the same mana. If you're building around colorless, it doesn't matter what mana you're making. Um, there's not a lot of absolute shit stomping decks that are colorless, but it can get a little crazy sometimes. And, and that's the, really the fun part. I think one of the most special things about all of these, I mean, I'm scrolling for forever here. One of the crazy things about the most beautiful things about these color combinations is that, um, Magic the Gathering has given players something to attach their identity to, which always makes for better gameplay, better community, because now they've kind of taken that um, Harry Potter wizarding world situation with the, the Hogwarts houses and put them into magic. So you'll find players like me who I identify with Demir hands down i love the way it plays i love the way um i love the way it wins i love the way it loses i love demir demir rogues decks those are my favorite um when i first started playing magic again a few months ago 
I was a little all over the place with which what my favorite pairs were. Um, and I've really grown to love Demir, the cards that they design specifically to synergize with Demir. And you'll find that a lot of Magic players that you meet or play with or talk to, they will identify with one color combination or another. Or maybe they won't. Maybe they're the type of all-around pro that plays one of everything. Um, but it was very smart for Magic to come up with these combinations because then they weren't designing on a five color system. They were designing on a 10 color system and then they added three color combinations. So now the, all of a sudden they have 20 plus combinations of cards to design around. And as long as they maintain sameness within those cards and the synergy works together, you're gonna find a lot of people that band behind one of these uh, clans, one of these guilds or another. And I think that that is, is very intriguing. And that is the basic rundown of the five color combinations in Magic the Gathering and why you would want to do it, uh, why you might not want to do it. You can play monocolor decks. You know, there's no harm, there's no downside. Um, you might not get some of the extra synergy that you'll get if you mix colors, but if you're playing a monocolor deck, you know that most of the cards are gonna work well together because the colors kind of all have a signifying theme um the two most powerful uh two of the most powerful decks in standard right now are mono decks mono white and mono green and they just work really well together and so there's no harm in playing mono there's no harm in playing two color decks there's no harm in playing three four five color decks um it's all about having fun brewing the most um fun deck to play it's all about, you know, finding something to identify a little bit with and, and enjoy yourself. I think there's, it's very exciting and I'm, I'm always intrigued to hear what other people are identifying with, what guilds they want to represent. Um, I think it says a little bit and nothing about every Magic player that plays this game.